first of all, thank you for uh, talking with me on short notice. This is one of those, oh, these are very interesting people and I love to ask some questions, so why not do it on camera a moment? <laughs> so thank you for being open for that. Uh, so you are the uh, one of the organizers of Festival Y. This is like, I'll probably just later film and just show it, uh, which is a lovely name. I love it. Uh, it says youth engagement, human rights, intersectionality, which is still a word I do not know and I will ask about, art, climate justice, gender and sexuality. I, I really like that subject. Social and climate justice festival for people from Baltics and Poland, but I presume people who come from outside of those places won't be excluded. <laughs> they won't be excluded, no. Good. But of course, the current situation, the current situation, yeah. may show differently. So, yeah. true. That's actually a good question that will. I'll, that's yeah. a question I'll, I'll want to actually ask later. So, like the whole Corona situation and how you still managed to actually organize this. So we'll we'll come to that. Uh, so I know I, I, I give you a heads up, but usually I don't. Uh, I, I try not to do to make it all organic, but I think that will still create the situation where you'll have to think about it. So uh, the very first question before we head to the festival itself, uh, one of the key words here is social justice. Now it's definitely a, a, a phrase, a term which is out there. I see it in articles, I hear people somewhat talking about it, but personally, if somebody would ask me to define it, I wouldn't be able to. I expect you will be able to define it. So, so how would you define the term? social justice. Would, would you like to answer that question? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you have mentioned before, it, is a, it was a so short, such a short notice. Yeah. And, and yeah, there's many ways to define it, I guess. Yeah. And from our perspective, I would say that it's about the Oh, that's, it's just so difficult to start. I don't know. I, I have I have the picture in my head. I don't know just just where to start because we could talk about the opportunity structure, about the system, about how system enables some of us to be more active and use those opportunities which are there. For okay. example, as uh, we we are privileged in many ways and we should be aware of that and use right. these privileges wisely. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are not in that position for many reasons, mm -hmm. which relates to many other topics as well. That's, I love that answer. It just opens up so many, so many questions as well. Uh, but before I get there, I guess, what if I would ask like that? So let's say you're, I don't know how inclined and, not, and knowledgeable your grandmother is. Uh, usually we sometimes in Lithuania have grandmothers who don't know that much. Although at the same time, my grandmother was like a yogi and <laughs> so it depends. But let's say a typical grandmother, the typical like we imagine it, would ask you, so what is social justice? How would you explain to her, is that is that okay? Answer, uh, question. I can. I or you want to? You want to? Yeah. I you want to. Yeah. I'm, I mean, we both can. Yeah, both, yeah. But you can. Yeah. 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 Social justice is a personal thing for everyone as right. well. Yeah. And for me, in the simple words, it's just an equal access to opportunities. Mm. But understanding that not everyone start from the same footing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. You need to provide something in like in between this like way where different people start mm -hmm. um, to make sure that everyone has equal access to the same opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the regards to the question of how to explain it to the grandma, yeah. uh, it also depends. You can explain it to a grandma, to your cousin, to your uncle. And to continue on Javila's point, everybody has a different understanding because of their social standing. Mm -hmm. So, for example, our grandparents, at least mine, they had to suffer through exile and Soviet Union injustice. And then I would say, well, grandma, if you think that you could not have done a lot of things which I can do now, and why do you think so? And I think she would understand. Mm -hmm. And I think then you can go to every person and see like, why do you think you are not able to do this? Or why do you think you are able to be active and to pursue your dreams? But I can't do the same, for example, or my friend can't do. And then 
we can go throughout the discussions which systematic failures are stopping people from achieving their best potential mm -hmm. because we do a lot, we all have potential but not everybody is able to exercise that mm -hmm. and to go for that nice. is that clear oh yeah, yeah. again I'm, I'm i guess i'm well known for it not being afraid to make a fool out of myself. So, so I'll just continue asking questions. Maybe somebody completely got the picture, but I'm like, still not entirely sure. So, uh, so we mentioned, so, so far what I'm, the, the picture I'm getting as uh, kind of creating a space environment where everybody has equal rights. Would that be one way to, to look at it? I think you like that question a lot, no? About <laughs> the equal rights and how it's not a correct term. Yeah, okay, there's the, <laughs> yeah. But I'm so super theoretical on this. So I like you. there's the you know the two different words: the equality or the equal rights or whatever, yeah. equality and the equity. Mm -hmm. And the true social justice should be built on equity. So what is it? So, so this is what I was talking about, that people are starting from different parts. So if you imagine if you have a picture of three men who are in different heights, right? And they're trying to see um, through, the, like, through the wall, they're trying to see a game on the other side, right? But they have different heights. Um, if we say we just need to provide like, you know, we, we need to provide equal rights. So basically we're just giving policies in this term, like we're giving different policies to like enhance uh, women's rights and things like that. What happens is that we just, for these three men that are now trying to watch this game, we'll just put the equal footing under them and the highest men would will be a man will be able to see the game but the right. other ones they have already they had like um how do you say well in this case it's a trait but yeah that already doesn't allow them even right. with some help it still doesn't allow them mm -hmm. so that's so that's equality and the equity is when you actually know what is needed so that everyone is able to watch the game mm -hmm. or yeah, do something. So this is like sort of picture representation of right. it. If it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Uh, because sometimes I, when I look at certain projects or initiations, especially like, and maybe that's a bad impression I got, but, but some government finance projects or even like some other global organization finance is something I usually see in an attempt to do something which doesn't really feel honest at times. It feels like you know, people are doing things which seem nice and sound nice, but there's not really a full attempt to make things happen where it really has a realistic change and everybody is a complete winner versus it's, you know, ends up getting, like, the, the finances go to somewhere where they are not necessarily most necessary. Like, I had a talk with a friend of mine from, uh, originally from Kenya, mm -hmm. and he worked, he lives in Switzerland, he worked in an NGO which was working with, poverty in Kenya, but he noticed that they're doing the wrong things. You know, they're, they're providing uh, the communities, the local communities, things which they don't really need, or they're not the game changers. And that's when he, why he went on to create, to create his own organization where he really pinpointed like, what's the game changer for those people? And he made sure that whatever they get is what they really need. And instead of just, oh, let's throw that, like, I think his example was, you know, let's buy like a lot of food for them. What's the difference? You know, they will, I mean, it's better than nothing, but they will eat that food and that's it. Their, not, their lives didn't really change. And he's like helping create like uh, agriculture and uh, finance, building schools and this and that. And, uh, and that feels like, okay, that's changing the game. And so I don't know if that's like, would you say like that? That just needs to be tailored right. to the needs. Right. So that's it, right? So there's, of course, with the, uh, with the, uh, like the project writing and fundraising experience that I have, I understand that sometimes it's so hard to know, like, you know, if you write a project in Lithuania, yeah. to know what all the people in Lithuania need, right? right. The, so the most, what you see is the most effective projects are the ones that are targeting one particular group, mm -hmm. um, in some way marginalized with a lot of research on mm -hmm. what is the thing that will help this specific group. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be, to, to have a true social justice, there needs to be a lot of research and a lot of knowledge on right. 
yeah, what's the difference with the, between the different groups or individuals or communities and what they need. So would, would you say that true social justice is, is kind of much more complex than just go hold a poster, you know, save this or save that? Uh, would that be like a good statement or...? <laughs> It depends who you who you're saving, right. <laughs> but no, of course. Like I mean, holding a poster is a. I, I would, I, I wouldn't say that holding a poster is a tool. Sure. Yeah. It's not. It's not social justice. Not climate justice. It's just a tool. So you could, you know, if your poster is very good, you could be raising awareness about a particular social justice issue, mm -hmm. and maybe at that point it was effective in the place mm -hmm. where you were. But it's just a tool, so I can't really judge whether holding. Sure. You know, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it is very complex. Like in the in the festival that we were talking, um, that we are talking about, we are we will be having like a day or half a day to talk about the systemic change needed, um, because yeah, that that's what Rita was saying. Like it's so complex that we need to think about changing not just um, particularly like human rights issues, but, uh, how democracy works, maybe even, you know, like how economy works, yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you, as we mentioned before, you have to understand that not everybody starts with an equal footing. Yes. For example, if you build an, uh, let's say an abortion center in a city mm -hmm. and you say, okay, we saw, so we solved abortion clinic, <laughs> sorry, we solved the problem now, but yeah, it's still right. only accessible for women who live in the area, who live mm -hmm. in the city, who are already privileged in many ways in that mm -hmm. account. But for example, if you live in a rural area, then you have to count and then you have to travel there, then all those things, you know, and that's and that's exactly it, to, pro to account for those things, to account for mm -hmm. those differences, to make sure, like for example, if you give me $500, mm -hmm. that's gonna save me for, I don't know, forever. If you give that for Beyonce, I don't know, she'll go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing for her. And that's a very extreme sure. example, but right. it's, but that's basically what it is, that mm -hmm. one thing can mean so very different help for different people, Absolutely. and that should be accounted for in policy, for sure. I love that. There's actually, I, I, I don't want to be a broken record about this, but, but again, that same project with Kenya that I mentioned, there's a system that person created, which was mind-blowing for me, that uh, you donate 30 euros for a child and he gets education for a month and food, like, like lunch uh, every day for that month and like uh, first aid expenses are covered for 30 euros. And he told me that, I was like, Wait, tell me, did I hear that right? And it turns out it's like that. I'm like, it's crazy that for us, like 30 euros, it's like, well, you know, I can live a few days, but but that can be a game changer. So I guess it's kind of a little like that, kind of taking that into account, right? Mm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I think you're getting the point. <laughs> okay, I'm getting there. I'm <laughs> we'll okay. get there. <laughs> I still, I still, I feel it's such a, you know, I guess it's impossible to just get it in in one discussion in one talk, but I'm kind of starting to see the landscape, which is already very enjoyable. Uh, to make sure I cover a few different subjects that I'm interested in, the other word was intersectionality. So forgive my lack of education, but let's let's fix that. <laughs> so what is it? What is intersectionality? We already actually talked about it, we yeah, just never named it. Okay. Yeah, because it's very related to the social justice concept as well. Okay. It's like if you look at the problem, you have to... It's never one thing which caused it, and it's usually systematic. For example, if you're talking about racism, let's say how it, how it works differently in different countries and among different groups, how it affects different the black men and black women and black kids, mm. and how it's systematically entrenched with the education, poverty, yeah. and all those. Uh, it's very related to, to the... I can paint another picture. Sure. <laughs> yeah. um, just a bit, this is a bit actually of history, how the word came about. Okay. So it was coined by Kimberly Crenshaw, who is um, a famous um, American academic. And basically there was how it started. It was because there was a woman in the US who, a, a black woman who was trying to get a job in a factory, mm -hmm. right? What year was that? <laughs> 
I do cannot remember the year. But, but like, yeah. More or less, or let's just skip that part. Uh, sure, we don't. Yeah, I don't want to okay. presume, but yeah. So there's a black woman, uh, but I think like maybe if the word came about like 20 years ago, yeah, then that's yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's not. Yeah, like... it's a recent word, and okay. yeah. So this black woman is trying to get the um, job in a factory, mm-hmm. right? And you know, goes through an interview and things like that, and then um, gets refused on the basis like she just gets refused because she didn't have the right qualifications that's what they said but the woman is not really happy right so she she actually goes into like maybe lawyers to actually check that out um i don't think the it went to the court but it was already sort of like legal checking about this and the so she comes to the lawyers and she's like you know i was I wasn't hired and I think they actually discriminate me, right? Mm -hmm. On the basis of some sort of discrimination. Um, But this factory that didn't hire her won on the case because they hire black men and they hire white women. So they can't discriminate because they don't discriminate black people and they don't discriminate women. Uh, But she wasn't hired because she's a black woman. Right, okay. So, and then this is where Kimberly Crenshaw started looking into it and coined this thing that, you know, you can be hiring black men and white women, but then there's people who still fall through the cracks. Mm. Okay, so it's kind of trying to prevent that aspect of that there's still kind of a, almost like a binary thinking in terms of black, white, but we forget that there's also levels in between there. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. And that's just one example. And, and it means that if you're looking at the issue, you can't just look at, it doesn't mean that feminism would save her because white women were already able to get mm-hmm. that job. And it's not a particular racist issue because black men were able. Mm-hmm. So it's a black feminist issue. and drawing on the same example black feminists find themselves in that situation often where it's Mm. either of those but but now those issues and this uh, of course this term was coined finally we're reaching the point where we can talk about those together but Mm. it's still very 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 early stages Mm. so it's very important to talk about it would you could you give like an, I think I, I I got the picture, but uh, at least like like a beginning one. But is there some other additional example? Like what are or like some of the core uh, topics that are discussed in intersectionality? What, what would come in your, in your mind? Like what's explored? I'm I'm thinking about the I'm thinking about Lithuanian example. Right. Not sure if we'll be able to put this on camera because there's a particular organization, oh, okay. but let's see. Okay. But yeah, but in in uh, so in Lithuania you have um, a big um, well considerably considerably for country uh, quite advanced like LGBT uh, movement in comparison to like maybe Latvia or Estonia Um, uh, but that's been pushed through with an organization which is the Gay League of Lithuania which is uh, basically like not a monopoly but it's like a big organization that is pushing what they say for LGBT Mm. plus rights, Mm. right? Um, But the thing is that there is smaller groups organizing that actually don't have funding and most of those groups are um, like non-binary people groups Mm. and things like that, or trans people, uh, because this big organization that gets all the funding to work on LGBT rights doesn't work on trans right. or the on trans people's rights or doesn't work on non-binary people's rights. Right. It's very on gay and lesbian. Right. Yeah. And then the, you can see that some people would be like are falling through that those cracks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's a Lithuanian example of it. Okay. So because I was thinking like of like my guessing examples and I was, I was wondering whether that that could be one of those cases where there's we're looking at gay people's rights and some people just kind of like they don't distinguish that there's also uh, trans people for example and it's just like they put it all into one 
big pot and think it's, it's all the same, same, but it's not really. It's right. not the same, and there's, and yeah, and as I mentioned, there's like kind of big issues with it because in all the three countries, for example, the, this Pride is organized, which is a very commercialized uh, uh, celebration. Uh, so every three years you get it in each country and it's very commercialized. And they celebrate that there is an advancement in LGBT QI plus rights mm -hmm. in these countries, a celebration. And then recently, like two weeks ago, I was attending a more, a much smaller, uh, like free pride, Vilnius pride, which was saying there's nothing to celebrate. Trans people, like they cannot get, you know, they cannot get medical help in Lithuania. They cannot, they cannot transition. That like, there's nothing to celebrate. While, you know, uh, the big organizations that are just pushing for lesbian and gay rights. Mm already like yes you know we want that's fine um so it's in the needs are very different mm -hmm. it's very different right like um in terms of medication in terms of employment as well like how many you know in, i don't know the numbers but in comparison how many gay people can be employed and how many trans people can be employed i i my guess would be that it's yeah. way less and yeah so yeah that's that is, yeah, it needs to be also distinguished and there needs to be a trans justice, then not just LGBTQ justice, mm. but also trans justice and non-binary justice and yeah, all of that. Nice. Yeah. So, Maybe it will also be a good disclaimer to say like, neither me or Vita are trans or queer people. Yeah. So we will like, it's good yeah. to say that in the camera. Absolutely. So it's like, other people this is what we're learning theoretically and right. not our own experiences that yeah. we're talking about. Which is also great because it shows, or at least again, that's just my, my thinking that it's not, you're not like biased in the sense of, of the other sense where you're like, oh, I'm a part of that community and that's why I care, but you care because it just makes sense. It's, it's kind of just uh, almost like a social conscious, conscience, conscience. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so this, whatever you, yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly the point because we are privileged in many ways. I mean, as women, we are unprivileged in some ways still, yeah, yeah. but as being white mm -hmm. and and being educated or have, having jobs mm -hmm. and having this access to many platforms, we are very privileged. Mm -hmm. And I feel that this is a part of our responsibility to use that in right. order to bring all those issues and many more which we haven't mentioned yet together. So you actually mentioned that uh, the word privileged a few times and that's where another question was coming to my mind uh, again to just kind of figure out the landscape. Uh, so from what I understand and it's, it kind of ref comes to my kind of aligns with once some of the reflections I had in the past as well like uh, if somebody is having like do you know the How's that in English? The, the pyramid of needs, uh, Maslow's pyramid. Have you ever bumped into it? Oh, yeah. Like you know, you first yeah. you have to take care of, like of shelter and food, and if you take care of that, then you can look at like family, and then you can look at the next level, and only then you have like spiritual or or something profound. And his idea was that you know you have to take care of the basics. And I noticed like if somebody even then it's not like necessarily a statement that it's impossible, but I think if somebody is struggling to to survive on a very basic level like like food and shelter it's probably wouldn't be fair for to expect us for them to go out and search for justice for others but as as i think i guess it's similar to what you're pointing that we have so many privileges like life is to a big degree so easy for us like you know those videos first world problems like, you know, there's third world problems and we're like, oh, my fridge is too full. Oh, no, you know, I, my bags are too heavy. Like, those problems are like, they're nothing. So I guess that there's the great idea that we have the space and capacity to look at issues that are bigger than just our daily issues which are non-essential so is that kind of more or less what you mean by yeah, privilege but it, it doesn't it doesn't mean that you have to feel bad for being privileged yeah i mean you just have to use that you don't have to be like it would be great if sure. you could use that privilege in mm. order yeah I'm repeating myself. No, just on the societal level, that makes a lot of sense because um, if I read this recently, I read this book um, about how the Baltics, the Baltics are transitioning, how the society is transi transitioning from the what you call the like the basic human needs, so like individualism. That's the first. It's not the first step of the site, but this is where like 
Europe is going from the individualism to value-based society. So individualism only ends when everyone feels that their basic needs are met. Right, right. In terms of like learning, uh, yeah, education, but um, in, in income, um, housing, food, yeah. um, and family, like stability. Mm. So uh, there is like this theory that as soon as you yeah, the, uh, as soon as you have the basic needs uh, met in the society, the society um, slowly starts transitioning into value-based society where people start caring about beyond themselves, which makes sense, right? Because... Uh, and, yeah, I, yeah. Go ahead. But we, I was about we to can say agree. Well, I mean, there's a lot I agree on that, of course, but individualism it also doesn't come out of the blue. There's a lot of societies yeah. who work together, this, but there are certain political and economical narratives which are which are pushing us to think just for ourselves because we, we feel as customers that we are being served. Right. And, but yeah. it's more toward, I would think that we should go towards more active citizenship yeah. where you're an active uh, within your society and and you're just not waiting to be served with something. And individualism relates to that a lot. But it's not that we just decide that it just, it's just a systematical thing, mm -hmm. for sure. So would you say that part of your vision for creating the festival, and which we're about, uh, I think will we'll be a good time to uh, introduce that in a moment, but would you say part of that vision is kind of, I don't know if the word educating is like, kind of doesn't, off my tongue but like like kind of level uh, elevating that consciousness of people to realize that we do have the capacity to to make a difference and that there are the fact that our lives are to a great degree they're very good whether people recognize it or not some people complain about everything <laughs> but but that to bring the recognition that actually there are things that we can change and that there are people who need things more than we do is would, would you say part of your vision is to kind of elevate that communal consciousness of people, or is it more focused on people who are already uh, more focused on social justice? Yeah, um, I think, well, in terms of what would be good, yeah. is that, of course, you want to get out of the bubble and also raise awareness, basically, of all these issues and uh, yeah, educate people and things like that. Mm -hmm. What will probably happen, and it's also a very good vision, and I'm like I'm personally really happy about this. That is first year, and I feel like we'll get people who are already in different groups, so they are socially active in one or another way, whether they're feminists or LGBTQI plus rights activists or climate activists or whatever. Um, and then the vision, if if we presume that, then the vision there becomes that all of these groups can meet together and like, because the movements are breaking and the, the, or the movements are not, they are, have, hmm, what's the word? Anyways, they're, they're small, they're small groups, they're small, um, it's fragmented. There's not one movement, you know, there, it's not that um, if, uh, let's say tomorrow, the Thainian parliament said that abortion is illegal in the thing is not that all the climate activists would run you know i mean it's slowly starting to happen that people are aware that you need to like support other issues as well uh but it's not that yet so i think the ideal outcome of this festival will will be that just to strengthen the movement within Mm -hmm. And of course, some awareness raising. Maybe so many people will come, and that's great, and they're really, really welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, mostly that, and we will actually be having some days where we will have facilitated planning together of how we can build more internal solidarity with each other, like whether there needs to be some, like whether we need to demand for uh, some change in a current system that would uh, allow for example, for easier active participation in the political decision making or something like that, that, you know, something like that would help all the groups. Right. So, yeah, this is the, the, mm. the sort of vision. But I mean, I, I can also tell you how it started, which is like... Sure. Um, yeah. Can I just, I do want to, yeah. just quick add up on that, that there's a lot of group, there are a lot of groups already mm. in the region, but they might be small yeah. and just 
knowing that there are other groups that you can work with, it increases your outreach and you're more able to pursue pursue the goal that you're going for maybe on your own you're not able to do that but as a group mm. it's, yeah it's more possible nice. sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. the story <laughs> how it started yeah. was last year July yeah I think it was last year July and I was in Brussels working in a climate justice uh, NGO um, and basically, um, well, you know, the thing in the government is Green Peasants Party. That's the majority in the group. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of was following what they're doing because it's quite new party in comparison to others. Um, and they are called Green, which is like, whoa, maybe that's going to be something yeah. progressive. Um, and I think by... I think by July it was also clear that some of the party members were uh, openly against LGBTQ um, uh, plus issues. Um, I think that became clear with the European Parliament elections. So I'm also fo I was following the European Parliament elections because yeah. when you're in Brussels you do those things. Um, it became clear because um, like this party still managed to join the green coalition of uh, of Europe, but not fully because the, the this green big party of the European Union said we you can't be you can't become full members because you're against LGBTQI plus issues, right? So, July, I see this and I, I'm getting constantly frustrated because they're using the green name, which mm -hmm. which they take it as like an environmental thing. Like, you know, we're going to plan, I don't know what they're going to do, but like, we're going to plant that many trees and we're going to mm -hmm. clean that many rivers and this is great, we're green, right? And that's that's the problem. That's the that's where I get very frustrated because that's not how you need to be a green mm -hmm. party or a green activist or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Latvia has a very similar situation. They don't have a green party, but they also have this sort of center uh, party that you know are very good on like environmental issues uh, because environment is becoming very popular. You know, like environmental issues and like being sustainable and that is becoming popular slowly um, but then they also like the current president in, in Latvia is openly against LGBT um, QI plus issues so like uh, marriage between two people of the same gender and things like that but also you know they present themselves as progressive and things like that so I basically message my two friends in Latvia and I'm like look this is like what's happening in Lithuania it's really annoying and also I don't know if many people like really know Know that you know that shouldn't be happening like that you can't be green and like that's it that's the only issue and Latvians are like yes like let's do something about it um, and then we're like yeah let's make like a festival um, and try to bring all those groups to talk about it and that's yeah that's the whole story and since then things are rolling yeah off yeah further. yeah well if uh, so for, for the viewers to have a clear picture how would you define your, I mean, define maybe, you know, it's kind of a strict word, but how would you explain uh, what your festival is, like, just to a like, regular person, so they would know, because can people, like, any can anyone come, like, and jump in? So, so how do they know what they would be joining? Yeah, in order, since we were talking about social justice and the intersectionality before, we wanted to ensure mm -hmm. that everybody is able to come. Mm -hmm. So it's a free festival. Which is amazing. And you have to really come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, of course, if you are from Poland, mm -hmm. Lithuania or Latvia, it costs money to get there. So it's that's an, also not an issue. Mm -hmm. that's, so mm -hmm. you just have to press a few buttons online and you can come. And we will, and we will be so happy <laughs> yeah. to see everyone because it is about people meeting together, mm -hmm. sharing the ideas, and actually working on plans. Mm -hmm. Because there's also a lot of events which is just like, yay, we have all those ideas and it's great. Mm -hmm. But then it's also important to work on specific steps mm -hmm. on what should be done and what we will be doing. And it's a continuous event. It's not that it's 
the, the impact of the impact of it is not gonna end as the mm. festival ends, but it's gonna be a continuing event, social and networking event for all those organizations and individuals. You don't mm. have to belong to an organization mm. to come. Okay. And and there will be also fun times. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not all politics, yeah. Right. There's also music, right. uh, arts, theater. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of opportunities for, yeah, it's still a festival and mm -hmm. it's, everybody needs some rest, of course, and mm -hmm. we're not saying that only those issues are important as well. Culture mm -hmm. is very important and mm -hmm. culture is a very, uh, strong strong medium in order to portray the message yeah and to connect people as well one more thing we brought up but we didn't talk about is uh organ organizing an event during covid <laughs> so how was that Can you, I, I mentioned how that. honest do we need to be <laughs> so sorry how honest uh, i like honesty i like have honesty. you heard of zoom <laughs> okay that's are there a lot of zooming there oh um so this weekend we had our first meeting face to face mm -hmm. uh but before that the rest of the year it was uh zoom calls between the latvians lithuanians and estonians all the time every week um there's also of of course been many concerns of organizing a festival in the end of August um, and yeah and we're still not sure whether it will happen because these times you don't know what will happen and we do want to make sure that the participants are at this like as safe as possible so like if the situation changes in, in August we are still on this like okay we won't do it just to make sure that everyone is going to be fine um, but yeah there's been considerations also of cancelling moving into next year it's really really hard to actually know but then in the end we said you know let's now we allowed to go ahead with the regulations let's just go ahead and then with planning and then the last minute if we can't do it we cannot do it we will do it next year sort of thing yeah uh, but we're still taking some extra steps, like mm -hmm. there's going to be masks provided, mm -hmm. not all the sleeping spaces are going to be fulfilled, so mm -hmm. people have enough space and oh. yeah, we still think it's important to have mm -hmm. the pandemic in mind. Yes. Yeah. And you didn't have to, the, the original date stayed uh, for the organizing? No, okay. <laughs> yeah, first festival was supposed to happen, oh, now I don't remember, but the first week of July. Mm. Uh, but of course we moved it to as much as possible further to the end of summer, yeah. And for the very end, I like to ask this kind of a trick question at the end. Yes, no pressure. No, it's just, no, the, why I say the trick question is, uh, if I would ask you for a summary of the whole conversation, how would you, what would be your summary? We can do it by sentence by sentence. <laughs> <laughs> or just you know, one after you, whatever you prefer. Like, what's, what, what are like the main thoughts that, I, obviously, you know, I was the inquirer, I was asked questions, but like, what's, what's, or like, what's, what are the most core, uh, the, the points you made or the points you shared today, which you feel like are worth mentioning again? Or what stands out for you? Social justice, equity and intersectionality are very important things mm -hmm. to look at when any sort of decisions are made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's very important to understand that just not you, that you are a part of a bigger whole as a society and you have to be responsible and if you are privileged, use your privilege. Um, festival Y is <laughs> happening on 21st and the 24th of August in south of Estonia. Everyone welcome to come. And, uh, and it's been a pleasure organizing it with my best friend and the team yeah. from the region and mm. to actually be doing things that's possible even during the pandemic. Mm. Yeah. Not brilliant. I, I want to have it as well. Like It's really wonderful you're creating such an event. It's so it sounds like a very meaningful and uh, and uh, timely event, and it's just again it's one of those we haven't spoken that much about it, uh, like you know 
you mentioned the backstory a little bit, but but kind of that narrative of uh, I always admire when people take something and they do it from nothing. And obviously, nothing is never nothing. There are connections, there are previous knowledge, experiences, but but still, like nobody, I, I imagine nobody asked you to do it, or nobody said, "Well, you should." do this festival and that's your, you know, that's your now thing to do. And you just decided to take it on yourself and, and do it. And that's, that's wonderful. I think that's a great example for people that things like that can happen if you have. So many if you're frustrated can, about some, if you're frustrated about something right. and you, you know, just don't want to keep that frustration and you actually want to do something with it. Yeah, then go, for then go and make a festival. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you have an opportunity, you know, you can if you can be active, I mean, and it's important to understand yeah. when you can be active and yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. So hopefully whoever's watching this will come and meet you. I mean not obviously not from the States. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> to Americans, but people from Europe and around. If they manage to come. Right. I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah.